Hello everyone. Uh, you're welcome to the second installment of the uh, my series on uh, deployment to Kubernetes and the setting up of an automated CI CD pipeline to automate the process, the development process um, within uh, Docker uh, for Docker applications, Docker and Kubernetes applications. So where did we stop? Uh, we stopped with um, deploying, uh, sorry, pushing an image uh, to the container registry. Let's look for our Azure subscription. Yes, uh, we were able to manually push an image to the repository, uh, AKS Calculator V1. And secondly also, we were able to use this image to create a deployment on the Kubernetes cluster here, which is the AKS Calculator. We created a load balancer here with two pods. So we have two instances of the image running, one on each port here. And this is the external IP address, which is over here. Uh, we can uh, run that through the browser again. Uh, can we get a clean? Uh, okay, so. And that is loading properly. Also, we were able to uh, test these out on on postman here we go so let's look for the uh, collection runner so we do put the ip address on calc default and we had to test running it at a test suite of a total of six tests and there we go so this uh test suite is talking to the website uh sitting on kubernetes and it's all green so it's time for us to uh, do something different now so next thing we're going to do is um, to put uh, to bring um, all our source code all that's under source control on Azure DevOps and we're going to do that and from there we're going to start creating and uh, building up an automated CI CD pipeline all the way from code checking to deployment uh, to the AKS cluster. So we're going to start now. So first thing we're going to do is um, go over to uh, to the browser and create a project. So we're going to create a new project. We'll call it AKS Calculator Demo. Yeah, we'll make it publicly visible. Uh, git. Um, let's do Scrum. Uh, should we do Agile? Should we do Scrum? Okay. All right, let's do Agile. And then we'll create a project. Okay, and that's it done for us. So the first thing we want to do is uh, get into the repo. So we have a default uh, repo sitting here. Uh, let's go for the SSH. So we're going to go for the SSH and we want to clone this. So we've copied this URL to the keyboard. So we'll go to yeah CD colon Let's. So we're going to do git clone. So AKS calculator demo. 
All right. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to go into uh, let's say over here. So this is what we just created now. So we'll just close we close the folder here. Close folder. And I haven't copied that. We want to go into File Explorer. So we've been working all all the while on AKS calculator demo start. So we grab all this and copy everything to AKS calculator demo. And that's where our repo is. So this is the one that we're going to tie our source control to. Now there's one more thing I'm going to do. Okay, which is let's get into yeah, Visual Studio Code. I'm going to ask it to open folder AKS calculator demo. So that's open. That's where we have all our stuff sitting. Manifest, SRC, uh, the source code folder where we have all the source code. And um, we have the PowerShell scripts that we used in creating the resources and uh, our container test, the one we used in pushing the image to the container registry. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing we want to do is create. Uh, that's going to be slightly tricky working. So I'll have to go back into possibly AKS calculator. Yeah, I need this file git ignore. Copy git ignore so I can go back to where we really want to be. Create a new file dot git ignore and paste this code here so I think we're ready uh, we're ready to um, push we're ready to push our repo um, online okay so So you see what the git ignore has done for us is reduced the number of things we're going to uh, push online from 36 to 16. So yeah, that looks uh, looks more reasonable now. Yeah, this looks more reasonable. C sharp, C sharp. Yeah, looks more reasonable. Okay, so let's um, stage all changes and let's commit the staged changes. Let's call these the initial commit enter so the change is committed and then let's push so it's all pushed to master so let's um, look at the repo so everything is sitting here under source control so we've got the SRC folder where the code is sitting we've got the docker file here um, we've got the docker compose file here and we've got the uh, ps1 file here the partial file that we used in creating uh, the uh, the resources so the next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to create a develop branch because this is a master branch that is created for us so yeah the usual practice is uh, we're going to create a develop branch where developers are going to work from so we're going to create that based on master so that's the develop branch so so the develop branch has exactly the same thing as the master zero zero so they're on the same level uh, in terms of uh, 
uh, code versions. So the next thing we want to do is to create a CI CD pipeline. A CI CD pipeline. Uh, before we do that, let me see what's going on with the environments. We don't have any environment yet. Uh, let's see if I can create one. Let's call this. Let's call this the dev environment. And we're going to connect it to Kubernetes. The provider is Azure Kubernetes. Uh, that's not the account we're going to use. We have to use a different one. So I'm logging into my subscription now. Okay, so this is a subscription we're going to use. So this is our cluster, if you remember. So for this dev environment, we're creating a new namespace. If you remember, the deployment we did the other time was to the default namespace. So now we're creating a new namespace here and assigning it uh, to the dev environment. So we just say validate and create resource. Yeah, so, so that's dev, the dev environment, dev.dev. .dev. Okay, and then the next thing is um, we're going to create one for QA, Kubernetes. Uh, thankfully, it shouldn't send us back to uh, authenticate with Azure. Yep. New. And we're going to call that QA. Or oh, namespace already exists. On Zodi's Auto. Okay, so we can. Oh, that's strange. Let's have a look. Let's go to. Let's come over here. Cube CTL. Uh, get name spaces. So you got default dev. We just created dev seventy seconds ago. Uh, there shouldn't be any QA there. Oh no, this is a different server. This is a different server it's stuck into AKS or Dizoto E5. Okay, if it was this one. Okay, then we have all the queues and everything there. But for this one. Okay, so yeah, so that should work now. QA, QA. Validate and create. So we're doing dev QA staging and prod. Dev QA staging. Kubernetes again. Azure Kubernetes service. Then let's pick the right subscription. Zodizoto. Staging. So that's uh, for the staging environment. So we have dev QA staging, and the last one we're going to do is prod. Dev QA staging and prod. So the name of the environment is prod, connecting to a Kubernetes resource provider, Azure Kubernetes services. And we'll pick the right subscription, new and prod, validate and create. So we've got dev, QA, staging, and prod environments. So let's go to the pipelines now. And um, 
we're going to create a pipeline uh, that's our repos repository yeah this one and actually let me be sure that we're doing this from the develop yeah yeah so develop set up build so we're going to build and push the image to the container registry and deploy to Azure Kubernetes. So we're going for this subscription, continue. Uh, it's asking us to authenticate again. And Otmail. Okay. All right, so we have our cluster here. So the first build we want to create, or the first one we want to create, is for the dev. Okay, let's let's do the dev one first, and then the container registry. SCR Zodizoto and the image name, let's call that um, what did we use on what did we use on Visual Studio Code? So kubectl get namespace get service. Okay, we use the AKS calculator, so let's be consistent. AKS calculator, we leave the service port alone, then we enable review app flow for pull requests. So we're creating one on dev, on develop, dev namespace is the one we want. So let's validate and configure. Awesome. So, the first thing we want to do is to change this to develop. We're actually going to do our builds on develop, not on master. On develop. So, we're going to make quite a, a number of changes here. Um, on the trigger, we're going to... We're going to trigger on branches because we don't want it to trigger a build on just any branch. So we're going to trigger it to build only on the develop branch. And then also we don't want just every file. We don't want just every file to trigger a build. So we're going to set up a path filter to include just SRC AKS calculator demo slash star and then we're going to program these to exclude manifests because we're going to do uh, quite some work on manifests here. Yeah. Okay. Why is it complaining? So trigger, branches, then include develop, then the parts, include source, src, slash, aks calculator demo slash star, and then exclude manifest. Okay, and then I'm going to take these out. Uh, 
trigger otherwise it's complaining okay parts and then resources yeah Trigger parts. Okay, so this is going to be saved directly to um, the develop branch. We just save it up for now. And we're not going to run any so let's go to the repos there are a few things we need to do here uh, this file needs to go we don't need it deployment.service uh, service.yaml uh, rather also this one we don't need it yeah that needs to go and also uh, what I could just do here is to uh, create a new pipeline and let's push this Kubernetes registry. Yeah, we'll pick the right subscription, continue. Oh no, it's going to ask us to authenticate again. At hotmail.com. Sign in. So picking the right cluster now. Namespace existing. Or oh, just for the fun of it, let's do default. So Desoto. New enable app preview. A string must have at least one character. Okay, new pipeline. E5F. Ooh, it's going to send us back. Next, and the password gets us in. Okay, so this are these auto. Okay, and let's just uh, pick another one. Yeah. Fail to get the access token uh, from the strong box. Okay, uh, let's go to the repo. All right, there are a number of things uh, we're going to do here. Uh, we don't need this pool secret. We're getting rid of this. And then the namespace uh, for the, uh, okay, then the tag. We're not going to use a build ID. Uh, I'll show you when we do the build, why it is a bad idea to use the build ID. Then for the pull request, we're going to use the pull request ID. This is going to fail once if we have a pull request to process. So we need a pull request ID for that. And then we're going to take out 
uh, the tasks that have to do with the pool secret. This one. So we take this task out. We don't need it. Then also we go to the deploy as well and take this secret task out as well. We don't need it. Okay, let's let's keep the line space. Right, so that's the deployment. Now for this one, AKS calculator YAML. So we put AKS calculator dot YAML. So we take this second one out. We don't need this pool secret again. We take this out. Same thing as well. AKS calculator YAML. We take that out. Uh, we put that here. And we take the second YAML out. We don't need it. And we don't need the pool secrets as well. So this is the dev. Deploying to the dev. And deploying to... Okay, so... Yeah, it looks fine to me. It looks fine. Oh, then we need to... Uh, move things around a bit now because we're going to have multiple environments we need to uh, move this deployment uh, the deployment stage okay so we have a deploy stage here and hmm. Okay, we're going to put this in a separate stage of its own. Okay, so, so a deploy job and then a deploy pull request job. So we're gonna give this its own its own stage. So we'll cut that off and bring it right after the build. And then we come over here and we copy and paste this and put it right on top of the deployment. So this, so the way it works is that the pull request stage is going to come first right after the build stage the pull request stage is going to come right after the build stage and that's uh, what i'm setting up now so pull request pull request stage and that's coming right after the build stage. Right after the build stage. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to move that condition we're going to move that condition right up here. This one. So it depends on the build, but we're shifting the condition up. So what it means is that if it's not going to be a pull request, this entire stage uh, is going to be skipped. This entire stage is going to be skipped. So, and this will be the jobs. jobs colon and then this entire deployment stage is going to be moved on by one tab yeah
So under this deployment, we're going to have this condition evaluated again. Then we're going to have the pool, and then we're going to have this environment. Then the strategy right on underneath it, then going all the way down. Then once this is done, we will then have uh, the development one coming right after. We will have the development one coming right after. Uh, the deep, so we we'll call we we'll rename that to deploy dev stage. Deploy dev stage. So we're gonna call that deploy dev stage. And we can call this dev dot dev. So for the pull request, AKS calculator dot yeah demo dot that number. And for this one, yeah, we'll call that the dev stage. So that's and the jobs come right on there, which is deploy dev job. Deploy dev job and succeeded, yeah, and it's not gonna be a pull request, okay? And the display name, we're gonna call that deploy dev job as well. So we can have some uh, consistency. Yeah, the image is the same. Yeah. So AKS calculator .yaml looks good. Then let's go up here. The image repository. Is it correct? Yeah, AKS calculator demo. Yeah, looks correct. Then the container registry looks correct. Then the Docker file, we need to do something about this. SRC. SRC. AKS calculator. And then the Docker file. So that's the correct location. So image repos repository. Yeah, so the build, so that's correct. Image repository, Docker file path, Docker service, uh, registry service connection, that's correct. Tags, correct. Then for the pull request, it's going to go in and process this. So this way it's create this way it's gonna create the namespace for the pull request. AKS calculator .yaml is gonna use that for the deployment. Then for the dev stage, so it depends on the build as well. Oh, and then we need to uh whack in the condition here so it doesn't stray into the jobs. Yeah, so this condition will prevent it from going in here if it's a pull request. So I think with that, um, we're pretty much done. We're pretty much done. So let's commit this to the branch develop and see what happens. Yeah, straight away it failed. Let's see why it's complaining. Okay, unexpected value minus trigger, unexpected value minus parts. So we need to look into lines five and nine and line 62. So let's have a look. Yeah, so five and nine and 62. So the deployment of the deployment of the pull request. It's complaining about that. Line 62. So after the jobs, writing out the jobs for the pull request, deployment, pull request, and then we should have a display name, and then condition, and then the pull. Oh, okay, I see what has happened here. Um, we are missing an indentation. 
So the display name here is meant to come right underneath. Ooh, it's not letting me, letting me do this. Oh, okay, I see what has happened. So display, let's go all the way down. And shift tab. Okay. So the condition is now sitting right on that dis display. So it complains about um, the uh, indentation as well. So minus deployment, display name, condition, pool, VM image. So that should work. And for the guys right here. So let's see what's going on with the pipeline. Yeah, straight away it's filled again. Okay, expected value minus trigger, expected value minus parts. Okay, so let's go back there. In fact, let me just go to, oh, okay. Oh, this way, oh, this way it means it's meant to look like. Let me just copy this across. Um, where are we? Yeah. Yeah, this is fine. So take the minus out of here. Take the minus out of here. Put the parts under the branches. Branches include. then minus develop so part then include you need to indent that then minus space and then we exclude and then we need to indent that minus space so that should work this time So trigger branches part flush. Yeah, so that's good. So let's see what's going on with the pipeline. Okay, I think we need to run it now. New pipe. Uh, okay, with um, you see why I didn't run? It didn't run because we have excluded the edit of pipelines YAML from the triggers. So we then need we we'll then need to manually uh, trigger this. Um, uh, manually trigger this to run. Uh, let's see. Let's see where we, yeah run pipeline. So we're running it in develop X unexpected value repo. Okay, let's see. Repos. Let's go over there again. Edit resources repo self. Uh, that should be correct. Yeah, repo self, and the next one will be the variables. Yeah, 
so that should be correct okay we'll do this so we're running this pipeline on develop unexpected value repo okay do 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 okay let's see repos yeah the yamos are the trickiest trickiest of this lot resources okay Yeah, pipeline run sequence. Resources. Supported repositories, repositories. use Azure pipelines yeah pipeline run sequence yeah so why is it complaining so more stages environment repos and triggers So that's the trigger. Okay, that's for the pull request. We are doing a pull request um, using another method. Repo self. Okay, I know what to do. Let's go over to AKS Calculator. Let's go to the repos there. Let's go to the YAML here. Oh yeah, that's the minus. AKS Calculator demo. demo. Repos. Yeah. So we're going to edit this. So we need to make this run manually. Yeah, run pipeline. We're running it on the develop branch. Okay, at last. So let's see what the build stage is doing. So it's looking for a machine to build on. Yeah, you found one. So initializing the job, checking out the source code. Now it's building. So right now it's building and pushing to the container registry. So what this um, task is going to do is to use the instructions, the very same instructions we have in our Docker file. Let's say this one here. And this docker file so it's running through these instructions here that's what the build is doing so you can see what dir app same thing what dir app then it's gonna after what dir app is gonna copy the solution you see so the exact same instructions 
that we used in building this application on our local machine is what it's using to build this on yeah is what it's using to build this on the server so so we I think we have about 11 steps in the docker file but it's going to add its own uh, I think it adds an additional nine steps uh, for the build server to work so yeah that's what it's doing now and what this process is doing is that once this image is built it's going to push it into the Azure container registry which we had and um, from there it's then going to uh, deploy so right now it's done with uh, pushing it into the uh, container registry on Azure and we had a successful process so it's waiting for a machine to build on uh, to do the deployment so this is what it's doing with the deployment is downloading the artifacts and then it's deploying to the Kubernetes cluster and let's see what happens here so you can see namespace dev is deploying to the dev namespace on the Kubernetes cluster now it's done it if you remember um, on the previous video we had to wait for the assignment of an external IP address so that's what it's doing right now It's waiting for an external IP address so it's not going to end this task until it gets that external IP address so but in the meantime uh, we can keep ourselves busy by going to the cluster here i uh, sorry by going to um, the registry the container registry and then going to the repository so we can see AKS calculator and very nicely put here you can see this is the reason why I changed the build ID to the build number do you see the reason so it's labeled it's tagged the image 2020 that's this year 02 that's February and 10th of February and this is the first build for today so you can see all nicely tagged this so the next build that is going to come through is going to have a number two here it's going to have 2020.02.10.2 so which is a really nice way of tagging your image builds so you can know what date what date oh successful so you can know what date you built on and the build number for that day so this is build number one for today in the meantime let's go back to the pipeline so it's all worked successfully now all downloaded and it's all fine so let's see let's go look for that IP address so this is the IP address for dev on the dev cluster and we're going to uh, do some checking around here so let's go here and put it on the browser all working fine let's give it a spin try it out five and six execute result is 11 all working fine and the next thing we're going to do is plunk that IP address into postman so we can have a test so let's go into calc dev so we're just going to plunk that IP address here so that's the IP address and let's update it and then let's just go straight to our runner set the environment to calc dev pick our suite of tests AKS calculator demo and then run the tests six passed zero failed so we have done a successful deployment um, a successful deployment of our image into the dev namespace on the Kubernetes cluster but before we go and um, uh, round up this recording let's have a look at what's going on uh, on the Kubernetes cluster itself so let's do it clear here so we're going to do kubectl um, get uh, deployment we just did a deployment but now we're going to put in an argument namespace dev 
Can you see that? AKS calculator dev. And the same thing we're going to do for service. Namespace dev. You can see that's the external IP address that we used. Now, the difference between these and the default, you can see that it doesn't have any entry uh, for the Kubernetes cluster on the dev namespace. But if we had done default, you see that it has a cluster uh, deployment for Kubernetes itself. So the default, um, the cluster IP sits on the default, but on the dev namespace, nothing. You see, dev namespace. So let's do pods as well. Uh, get pods. And let's see our running pods. Get pods namespace dev. So you can see we've got two pods running on dev. And if we do default, you can see that there are different pods altogether. You see? See that? So we have a total of four pods now. Two pods running on the default namespace. See, we created this nine hours ago on the first video. And two pods running on uh, the dev namespace. So that's what we've done. Let's look at... Um, there are still things we can play around with. Let's look at the replica set. Repli replica set. So this is a replica set for default. We created that nine hours ago. And this is a replica set for dev. We created that five minutes ago. So you see now that with this deployment, we have managed uh, to move things across. But just before we go quickly, let's... Uh, be sure that our automated deployment uh, works properly. So to do that, let's do, let's go to git, check out, develop, um, develop did not match. Oh, okay, because um, it's not aware that we've created any develop. Let's do a git fetch. Okay, so git check out develop so we're on develop uh, let's do a git pull so already up to date so now what we want to do is to go into any level below src in fact what we can do if we're not going below src let's make a change here so we have done a change on one of the scripts on the root directory so let's stage Let's stage it, and then let's commit staged, and then let's do change to script. So that's committed, and then let's do a git push. So we've pushed that change to develop. So let's come over here and see if there's any build triggered. See, no build triggered. Why? Because on the pipeline, we have instructed it not to consider anything that is outside src aks calculator demo star now the next thing we're going to do is now come under this level under the source code level and let's go to the controller here and let's just include an additional line or let me stop being rude here and let's say wrong info sent through and let's save it and then let's stage it stage all changes and then let's commit staged and then let's uh, say uh, code comment changed and then let's push that change push and then let's go over let's go over to the pipelines oops nothing has happened yet okay let's see repo develop so branches to include trigger we're triggering on branch develop and we're including on this and excluding on this 
Okay, um, let's see. AKS calculator demo and then star. So that was manually triggered. So we need this uh, to build. So, so yeah, that's on develop. Branches include develop. All right, so let's do something here. Under SRC, calculator demo. So that's instead. Let's do something about the Docker file. So let's come over here. here. Let's stage. Stage all changes. Commit staged. Okay, we need to put in a comment. Uh, CRLF inserted. And then let's do a push. And that's on develop. So let's go to the pipelines. Okay, still not triggered, but let's find out why. Runs. Okay, anyway, what we can do uh, for now is let's do a manual run and be sure that all our changes, or in fact, let's go in here and look at the commits. So this is a commit on dev. Okay, so all our commits are in. So we just need to uh, be sure that uh, we can we can run our pipelines. So run pipeline, and we're running it on develop. Yeah. So we'll address this on the next video. To be sure that um, the right the changes in the right folders uh, trigger um, the build, so we've manually triggered the build for this to work, and then we close this session. And on the third video, we're going to um, include pull request triggers, and we're going to uh, impose a restriction on changes that nobody should just be able to check stuff into develop branch without a pull request and without an approval coming from the dev manager and also we're going to link changes to work items on the azure board so it means that um, you cannot possibly uh, check in a change successfully um, into develop without a work item being created for it and also without a pull request being created and approved by the dev manager so we're going to see that on the third installment of this video. Uh, it's been a tricky ride on the second video because um, I've not rehearsed these at all um, and I'm not doing any video editing. So you're watching me live and direct going through it step by step with no rehearsal at all. So it took some time for us to get the YAML going but we eventually got there, good practice for me. And um, we just watched this build uh, we just get this to finish building. Uh, it's almost there. And once again, it's uh, going to be going to the dev namespace. So we want to look at the build number that it's going to assign to this. We'll look at the build number that it's going to assign to this uh, build uh, as soon as it's done. So it's starting to push the image into the container registry now. Yeah, and it's done. So it's going to publish the artifacts um, so that uh, the deploy stage can make use of those artifacts. So, so let's just wait for the deploy stage to start. And we go over to the registry to see what has happened. Okay, so it's getting that to start. So if we come over here and do a refresh, so you see that the AKS calculator has a second version now. See? 
this was 2020 02 10.1 2020 02 10.2 so this is the second build for today 2 44 p.m yeah which is what we have 2 45 p.m and um nicely tagged so we can trace um, each image that has been pushed here back to the build on the pipeline so kubernetes is um successfully done now if you notice the uh, this uh, this ip address build succeeded 52 157 10936 52 157 10936 so it's the same ip address that is going to use uh for the dev namespace all through and if we come back to uh if we come back here let's see where did we start from we started from bash so let's do yeah get replica set so you can see now that um, the replica set 14 minutes ago has been discarded and a new replica set has been brought in let's go to the pod let's get pod pod dev so you see now the pods we had earlier on have been destroyed and new ones have been created just barely 71 and 78 seconds ago and then let's go for service service should uh, generally remain the same you see 15 minutes ago service the service doesn't change so it's the ports that get recreated and then let's have a look at um, the deployment on dev namespace uh, deployment dev namespace so you see 15 minutes ago that still remains and then let's do a uh, kubectl get namespace so you see, we created this namespaces earlier on, uh, def, uh, dev, default, prod, QA, staging. So you see now, these were all the uh, namespaces we created. So this brings us to the end of the second installment of this video. Please join me for the third installment where we're going to uh, link uh, code check-ins with pull request triggers. And we're going to watch this pull request triggers do some magic for us on the YAML pipeline. And then we're also going to complete our multi-stage uh, deployment on the same YAML file all the way from the dev namespace to uh, the QA namespace, to the staging namespace, and to the prod namespace. And uh, you're really going to enjoy this uh, third installment. So please come again and watch the third installment. If you like this video, please, uh, if you enjoyed watching this video, please like it and share it with the Kubernetes uh, community and the Azure DevOps community. And this is really great. Pushing up a change uh, from your local machine and triggering a build all the way uh, into dev, all the way into um, QA, into staging and into prod. So see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.